God. Hey, everybody, we're here with the author of Welcome to the Universe in 3D, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So astrophysicist JPL at Jet Propulsion Laboratory want to send a message out into the universe to tell intelligent extraterrestrials where we are, and I think with like a map of our genome, too. Basically, this is how you build us. Are you in favor of this? So in the old days, I would have been, but I thought about that, and you wouldn't give your email address to a stranger in the street who is your own species. <laughs> and now we're gonna give the return address to Earth for aliens. I don't know if that's a good idea. I'm just, I'm, I'm... Is it possible for us to hide, though? I mean... Oh, are, oh, are the... oh, 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 yeah. So that, that ship has sailed. Because ever since the beginning of television, television waves go to your TV with, remember, the rabbit ears? But yeah. they also went out into space. Right. So there is a, a, a radio bubble expanding at the speed of light that contains our entire culture embedded in what TV shows people watched for the past 50 years. So, so the aliens are going to think we have talking horses. <laughs> yes. <they're> going to be. <laughs> Mr. Talking Ed, horses. They're my mother, learn. the car. Uh, yes, 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 yes. All of that, they'll, they will decode who and what we are wow. through those signals. But they'll think we'll have phasers and photon torpedoes, too, so they might leave us alone. They might be a little scared. But I'm pretty sure, based on the rest of the data, yep. they will conclude there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> Same. How big, by the way, how big would that bubble be? How big, like, well, right how... now it's about 80 light years going at the speed of light. Well, 160 then, right? Because well, it's Well, on the, on, to be the diameter, correct. Sure, so, sure, sure. so that's already washed over exoplanets that we already know exists within that bubble. Do you, uh, I heard recently that Proxima Centauri, for those who don't know, it's the nearest star to ours, which is a brown dwarf, has a planet a around dwarf, it. Yeah. Oh, is this a red dwarf? Mm -hmm. My apologies. Yeah. Um, my, uh, a red dwarf, <laughs> and that it has planets around it that might be in the Goldilocks zone. There might be liquid water possible there. So, in our search for exoplanets, which is now rising through 5,000, by the way, anyone in the audience born since 1995, just quickly raise your hand. Okay, good. So I now knight you all Generation Exoplanet. Because <laughs> that was the year the first exoplanet was discovered, 1995. Before then, we knew of no planets in the universe outside of our eight. And, and, now, and now thousands, <laughs> right? We're, we just passed 5,000 just a couple of weeks ago. So, wow. so, so among those, some of them have multiple planet, planet systems. Yeah. And when you have multiple planets, you can check, is one of them in the Goldilocks zone or not? And if you're there, you can sustain liquid water. And if you have a ranking of which planets you want to check first for life, life as we know it, those are where you'll go first. Y y you've said we must learn to love the questions rather than focus on the answers. What question do you presently love the most? I wonder if the human intellect is sufficient to answer the questions we have posed, or even more so, are we smart enough to even know what next questions to ask? I lose sleep on that. <laughs> so my question is the question about whether we even know what question to ask. And, 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 and that's not so weird, because imagine, you know, have you ever had a conversation with a chimp? It's generally no, you can't. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, oh, I'll meet you tomorrow. Oh, a shipment of bananas are coming in at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. They don't know what 4.30 is. They don't know what tomorrow is. Your simplest sentence goes unrecognized by them. And they, we, we have 99% DNA in common. So imagine some other species, 1% beyond us, that we are beyond the chimp. What would we look like to them? Their simplest sentence would transcend our capacity to comprehend. I'd lose sleep over that. And if that's the case, there's stuff in the universe we will never figure out. And I want to know when we hit that wall, because I'll just go to the Bahamas, and I'll be fine. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody.